You are now listening to Feeding Off Each Other. Welcome back to Feeding Off Each Other, the weekly podcast where we feed. It's so hard to do the intro when you're smashing the soundboard. The weekly podcast where we feed up the talent, hear knowledge, and awesome stories of our guests and each other. I'm Matt Dennison, joined as always by David Clean Cup Wiggins. Hello, thank you. Dave! Clean mug. Clean mug. He finally cleaned the mug. And to his left, Mr. Jason, no mug, no cup, no drink, no beverage, no nope. nothing, Lucas. Nothing. Nothing. Raw dog in the podcast? Uh, yeah, my water is too far now to go get. I made, I made a slight miscalculation. No, I'm fine. I got, I got some fluid in me this morning. So, okay, the mug. Mm-hmm. A few podcasts ago, mm-hmm. I gave you, I said it was a pet peeve, mm-hmm. didn't I? Is that, was it a pet peeve segment? I, I think so. I said your mug was so dirty. Every time I looked into it, I mm-hmm. dry heaved. Mm-hmm. It had <laughs> layers and layers of coffee on it. And you were defending it immediately as I knew you would. You're like, what? It's not even dirty. It's not even dirty. What? It's tea. just like this. And then we sure cut the podcast. That? And then you gave your the inside of the, finger, uh, inside of the mug a little mm-hmm. fingernail scratch. And immediately it was clean in that one spot. It just scraped off months and months of whatever Mold. the hell you're drinking out of there. Algae. It's green tea, <laughs> so it's it's clean. Um, it's, that doesn't make any sense. It's seasoned. Um, okay, in my defense, two things. I, okay, I, I defensive cl- again. Mm-hmm. I clean it every time. Like, I wipe it, I rinse it. But what was, it was caked on. So it was like, it needed a scrape. So Yes. And I have mugs that are permanently stained that I've scraped and done everything to, and they don't get clean. This is a different kind of mug, so this one shouldn't have done that. This one's a bit more That's of like... A, that mug is perfectly smooth. No yeah. texture on the inside. Yeah, Super yeah. Technical. You scratch it with your fingernail, and you're saying you need to scrub it or scrape it clean? Yeah, because the fingernail is very abrasive. <sighs> I, guess, I guess so. But now it's nice and clean. Well, now you don't have the vitamins and <laughs> yeah. nutrients that you had before. I'm, I'm failing. Yeah. Well, other people went crazy for it, right? We had how many comments? At least upwards two. of two. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of comments. I know. Books. All right, it's bright and early here in the studio. It's uh, nine thirty a.m. It's uh, this is the earliest here in a while. I guess crank works. We cranked out a couple early ones, but uh, we did crank early. Though. Whew, hopefully, we can hold this together, fellas. We have a guest today. We haven't had a guest for three wow. episodes, I believe. Yeah, that yeah. sounds about right. Yeah, that's right. But uh, I guess today was rolling through town, and we thought, hey, why not get you in? So Jason mm-hmm. wrote an intro. Oh, shit. Take it away. Mm-hmm. Okay. I added some words. I did see that. Don't worry. Damn, I was hoping it would be a surprise. <laughs> Today's guest is a self-described pro mountain biker. Nope, pro bike rider, which I should say is pretty accurate. If you're a mountain bike OG, you may know this person from their insane film segments in movies such as What's Next and Builder. Or if you're a Gen Z, you may know them from all their insane photos and videos they post across social media that absolutely rack up the views. This person has written in some of the most insane places <laughs> Early around in the, the world, but at the same time has created some insane features in the insane forests of insane Vancouver, insane island. Gentle Chellers, please give an insane welcome to Marky, Mark, Mark, the Sharknado, Matthews, TM. <laughs> welcome. Um, 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 um. Sorry, I couldn't give eye contact. There's too many words. <laughs> I, was I, added, I added all the insanes because you used insane twice in like the same <laughs> sentence. I, I saw was that. Like, I'm going to sneak him in and th- see if he notices. Definitely notice. <laughs> well, next time I'm just going to like copy and paste it literally the moment before you read it. Yeah, that'd be the best. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. I reviewed the notes before we before we pod. So insane. Are you feeling insane this morning, Mark? Yeah, thank you for the insane intro. <laughs> that was so good. That I'm was, not the one. That was, was <laughs> low-key pretty insane. Yeah, uh, what brings you in town? Well, I've been filming with my friend Anderson all week. He's up here from Bentonville, and we're shooting some FPV shots just for fun, just stacking shots, having a good time. And yeah, he's flying out of Vancouver tonight, so we came across the pond over to the the big city. You didn't tell us you were bringing in a guest. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. He's chill though. What, where is he? Disappeared. <laughs> he tried to move as far away from the front of the yeah. camera yeah. as <laughs> possible. Classic camera guy. Have you been to Bentonville? Yeah, twice. Um, that's how we met each other. We worked together mm-hmm. this spring shooting a campaign just for the local tourism board down there with Scott Bell. And Anderson was our drone guy for the week. So we had a lot of fun together and I've been thinking of ways to get him up here and had the perfect opportunity to come up a couple weeks ago, and here he is. Sick. What can you yeah. say about Anderson and his drone flying skills? Because uh, a little interested in FPV, haven't really gotten into it. It's pretty, it's, you know, it's a skillful 
talent. So yeah, it's like very technical. I don't know really anyone who has those capabilities here. Oh, sorry. We're all pointing. There, there we go. go. Oh, you had the perfect draw for that. <laughs> I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want to step on your story. Yeah, oh, we yeah. all stepped on it. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's super impressive. Like I'm, I'm blown away by the creative angles he can get and the, just the ability to chase me through tight trees. It's pretty cool. Like I haven't seen anyone do anything like that before. So it's, it's a lot of fun. It's like a whole new perspective on, especially like seeing the trails that I've been building for years and then finally showing them top to bottom in one shot. Mm. It's not just POV. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So you guys are going to get out after this and yeah, I'll go up Seymour, find some fun stuff. We got the rest of the day. His, his ferry or his flight out isn't till late tonight. So it's a sky we, ferry. You can call it. Yeah. His, his sky ferry <laughs> yeah. doesn't leave until like 11 PM. So we got all day to get some shots till we run out of light tonight. Now, now can we talk about Anderson's bevy over there? He's uh he just, he's about to crack open a nice bevy. Uh, is this, is this, can this be discussed? Yeah, I mean... Okay, yeah, he's drinking a uh, some sort of marijuana beverage from a, a oh, local sick. dispensary. Yeah, And I said, oh, nice, so you uh, get stoned before you FEV? He's like, always, always. Oh, always. <laughs> now, I appreciate the focus I must give you, yeah. but uh, does he ever, like, like, fall asleep? He's, like, playing with controllers and the drone's already crashed 30 yeah. seconds ago. Yeah, it's funny. Like, so he's been super hyped on the ability to just, like, walk into any dispensary, buy those drinks, and oh, right, cause he's the done, yeah. truck, my truck is, like full of empty THC cans <laughs> <laughs> and I was driving my girlfriend Chelsea somewhere the other day just a few days ago and we have all these empty cans in the truck now and she's like picks one up she's like 40 grams of sugar how much sugar does this guy have in a day <laughs> well I'm drinking a double double there's yeah. at least 40 grams in this but it's not gonna yeah. get me high no FPV drone and, and THC beverages what kind of like droning and, and, nice. and stoning droning and stoning droning and stones what does it do for you what does it do? Helps smooth everything out. Smooth it all <laughs> out. No warp stabilizer for this yeah. guy. Mm. Nope. No stabilization needed. Yeah, I gotta get something off my chest, Mark. Okay. How the fuck do you have a million subscribers? You're a pro mountain biker. I've been calling myself a YouTuber for 15 years. I can't even get a million subscribers. I'm gonna jump off a what the the fuck tall, tallest I found, structure. I found a hack to this, and it's what I'm doing next weekend. Urban racing. Uh, <laughs> I, from the Mexico race I was in last year, the ultimate urban enduro, I have a couple YouTube shorts with almost 200 million views each. Wow. wow. Yeah, Jesus. so it's kind wow. of like a blessing and a curse to hit a million on YouTube because the number looks cool, but it's not translating to the long form videos. Mm. So what are you getting on a long form video? Maybe like 10 to 20K. So Damn, not where I want to be, but it's, it's cool. Like it still helps. Like you can do shorts and you can make related videos, your long ones. And it does give you a boost for sure, but it's, yeah, it's kind of a weird place to be in with the channel because it's like not the way I wanted to grow, but it's still kind of cool having that many subscribers, I guess. It's pretty cool bragging rights, you know? Yeah, I guess. You can walk into the bar or whatever, whatever the local dispensary and be like, you, know, you guys don't have a million subscribers? Yeah. Uh, I got a plaque on the way. You're going to get the gold plaque? I do have one already. You already oh, have yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. What? That yeah. was legit. That wasn't that long ago that you crossed a million. Yeah, like this spring, I guess. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. Yeah. Matt's actually got a monitor at his place that's just your subscribers. <laughs> yeah, he just knows. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, direct feed. Yeah. yeah, like at Facebook when they had the followers, you know? Okay. No, there was like a few days there. I, I don't know why I spotted it or maybe you mentioned it, but there was a few days where I was like seeing you grow oh. and it was tens it, of thousands a day. It was crazy. It was like 20,000 a day. It was that one short, that really? one YouTube short from the Urban Racing. That's crazy, man. Yeah. Damn. But it doesn't translate, which is such a shame. It is. Mm. It's like, it's almost like a different audience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like posting less shorts because it's not really the way I want to grow on the channel now. There's so much more depth to long videos, more yeah. storytelling. It's a lot more value for sponsors too. So I'm just trying to like figure out ways to keep long form interesting. And yeah, I mean, that's where I'm at with it. Like people have said that subscribers is a vanity number. It doesn't really mean anything. I don't know if I really agree with that. I feel like optics wise, it looks pretty good. If you could say you got a million subscribers, like, well, a million people made, took the action to. Is that yeah. not the vanity part? Or? Well, they're, they're just saying like, oh, it doesn't like kind of Mark is saying it doesn't translate uh, to views necessarily. It's just, it's just a number. It doesn't mean anything. They're not oh, making money off of it. They're not, you know, they're not even getting views on the videos that they're making. It's just, it's just a flex, weird flex. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they don't monetize the same way either. Oh, shorts. shorts. 
Yeah, sure. It's like yeah. they still make money, but it's like significantly less than a long video. Yeah, because it'd be less time for ads. Yeah, exactly. So what's going on in BC? You were telling us a little bit about what, what, what you're doing. You and Anderson have been shooting for like 12 days. Yeah. So there's this zone above Powell River. It's about a 15-minute heli ride. So like, I don't know, like 80K out from town up on the t- up in the alpine it's 6,000 feet above sea level of this zone and i saw darren Bearcloth and kenny smith went there a few years ago looked incredible just like granite slab just imagine squamish with squamish with no trees yeah what video was that it was a video for outside tv oh, that yeah. darren and kenny did mm. um i think uh i don't know who else sponsored it but it looked really cool and ian middleton is the guide for that zone he runs flow state guiding so i was in communication with him recently and i really wanted to go up there so we kind of made a deal where we'd give him some promotion for his guiding business. We would learn about it, and he'd take us up there. We would see some of the lines, and he was so excited to show us the area because he's like, man, Dan- Darren and Ken only saw, like, the surface of what's around camp. There's, like, so much in this area. There's actually a rideable slab that's four kilometers long. Crazy. <laughs> what? Yeah, oh we God. never got to go there because we had to end the trip a day early. Ian actually got injured on just like a stupid little bunny hop line and ended up ripping up the back of his leg, oh. exposing his Achilles tendon. Oh, brother. Ugh. Yeah, brother. yeah, he didn't actually like hurt it, but it was just a big explosive cut and we're in the back country. So it wasn't safe for him to stay up there. He had to fly out and get stitched up, get antibiotics. And it was already starting to get infected the next morning. So he really should have gone out Dang. immediately. But yeah. How, we how does he know he was getting infected? He could just tell. He could feel, he's like a, he trains search and rescue people and he was actually the safety guy for a few seasons on the tv show alone oh no way. so this what? guy's like yeah, this, this guy's like really dialed in the backcountry um knows all the safety protocols and he he was a really good guy to have out there but yeah when he hurt himself he had to get out of there and then we helped him pack up his entire camp so he has this like really nice base camp up in the alpine there against this little glacial lake and he's got a pop-up sauna with wood fire heat a yurt tent and then his tent and then he rigged up an outdoor shower was propane fueled for warm water. We didn't actually get it going because he had a few issues with the wiring, but it was like this insane setup. And then we had to basically tear down the whole thing for him on our second last night or the last second last morning. And then we packed everything up, put it on a big net for a helicopter to haul it out. And then the rest of the crew left as well. Ian had to leave. It was just Anderson and I sleeping under the stars on sleeping bags with a bit of food, can of bear spray between us and an inreach. It was pretty gnarly. We're like, we're out there. In a THC uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. orange soda. <laughs> <bottle>. Gnarly <laughs> or romantic? Yeah, he hadn't, he hadn't discovered the drinks yet. That was... A- <laughs> <laughs> He's like, man, these stars are so boring. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> anxiety, big anxiety. Yeah. Just firing. Yeah. Oh, my Damn. God. Yeah, it was pretty fun. Well, how did he bunny hop and tear out the back of his leg? Like, did it-, it was just like a little meter long hop, and he already had a sore wrist from earlier that week, so... <laughs> that morning he's like i think i can do bunny hops and then we do like a an hour long hike a bike up the alpine up this gnarly rock line and then we get up to this ledge it's like a big cliff on your right wall on your left and pretty narrow but it's a chill ride if you just like look straight don't just ignore the exposure <laughs> but he like tried to make it a little bigger by hitting it outside and anderson actually got it on the drone and it looks really mellow because it's not a big line it's just an exposed line and he cased a tiny bit and you know like when you case and your back tire gets kicked up it's yeah. kind of what happened, and his pedal just like punched into the back of his mm. leg, right out his ankle there. Damn! Ripped the skin open, like ripped the flesh open. It was pretty gnarly. Oh man, that yeah. sucks. So I was down at the bottom of the hill. I could see it happening. It looked like he just slipped a pedal. I'm like, oh, that looks like nothing. Yeah, I was gonna say like when you slip a pedal, sometimes you catch the back of your leg. Yeah, like, I'm almost sometimes scared to look because you feel the sting, <laughs> but it's so yeah. like delicate back there. The skin yeah. is so thin that it, I'm, I'm scared it's gonna be worse than it yeah. feels. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those things where. You have like the worst injuries from the stupidest little crash or mess up. It, it was the mellowest looking thing. And he, he felt really bad. Like he's like, I'm the God. I shouldn't be the one getting hurt. So he was like pretty bummed out because he was kind of like, this isn't cool for you guys. But I mean, it's no one's fault. It's just an unfortunate incident. Yeah. Bummer. What a setup yeah. though. He's got a sauna, shower. Yeah, How big is this yurt? You can, there's four cots in it. You can comfortably sleep four people. Oh, wow. What? Yeah, you guys should go up there next summer. It's pretty cool. I need to learn how to bunny hop first. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It sounds gnarly. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, it's a really beautiful spot. So, wow. So I guess that's uh, not happening then. Like, you're, you're, you're done. You can't... Uh, 
Wait, you were going to shoot up there or did you shoot? Did we you? did shoot for the first few days kind of on the smaller lines. There was one line that Bearcloth named the mini putt line. So we were on, up there the first night and the last night. We managed to get an FPV run that's like a full minute long. So I'm on a slab for a full minute. Wow. It's still big. Why is it called the mini putt line? So it was one of the smaller lines out there. Oh. That's how long these lines are. And there was longer ones that we got into, like by the time you finally get to them, because it's such a trek, we got to this one line that was probably double the length and it ends at a big lake. We had epic golden light for it. I was cruising pretty slow. So we just had the Mavic up, getting nice scenics as I'm ripping through. And then we end up down at the lake. It's getting kind of dark out. We're talking to Ian on the radio. There was like a bit of a miscommunication of which way to traverse around the lake. So we took the long way around. Then we ended up on this one side where it was just giant boulders, like 20 foot tall boulders and then water. And he's on, and Anderson was on an e-bike with his camera bag. And we're like hike a biking. Typical stoner. In the dark. The by the way. Know, right? <laughs> 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 yeah, we have the, the e-bike and the my bike. And, and then we're just like trekking our bikes out of there. We didn't get back to camp until 10 p.m. So it was a... Definitely a mission, but yeah, it was a pretty cool adventure. Wow. Yeah. Uh, we were talking yesterday on the pod, or the other, when did we last pod? A couple of days ago? Oh no, I'm revealing too much. Look behind the curtain. We were talking about 10 out of 10 pain. When's the last oh, time we experienced 10 out of 10 pain? Yeah. Jason had experienced some 9 out of 10 pain with yeah. his really? finger. He's got a broken finger yeah. right now. I broke my finger and um, I went to the hospital to get it checked to see if I needed surgery. Yeah. And I did, but the doctor did it like right on the spot. He was, okay. Yeah, and so he had to freeze the finger, and to do that, he put a needle in between the fingers, like into the hand, and there's a lot of nerves in there, and I it was like, like so much pain. Like right the needle away. was way worse than the actual finger break. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like it was a thousand. It was worse. And then after it was frozen, and then he drilled through it while I was awake and put two pins in. I didn't feel any of that. Wow. But the the freezing. It's like when you go to the dentist and you get a cavity filled. The worst part is getting that numbing done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was bad. Dave, that did sounds you, horrible. Did you <laughs> chime in on your uh, 10 out Have you had a 10 out of 10 pain experience? I don't know. I mean, I broke my leg. That was pretty bad. When the Canucks lost Stanley Cup. <laughs> Honestly, I was definitely more <laughs> choked about that than breaking my leg. <laughs> Uh, Mark, 10 yeah. out of 10 pain. Because well, there, there's a couple, we know a couple, remember a couple stories. Yeah. Red Bull Rampage, you broke your femur? That's what? probably the most mm. painful. Um, I did put a giant spike through my foot once. Spike? On purpose? Yeah, like a nine inch <laughs> spike. Like, well. This was in, when you were in your goth phase? No. Just <laughs> <laughs> I pierced my foot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, it's one of my old trails in Victoria. I, I started building some wood features on it and I didn't like them. So I just kind of tore them down and threw them off on the side of the trail. And mm. the, I forgot there was like big metal spikes sticking out of some wood. And I was just hiking up the trail one day, like hike a biking and stepped right through it. Ooh. That was really like, the, wow. the foot is like, it's a lot like your fingers probably. There's a lot of nerve endings there. That hurts a lot. But the most painful sustained pain was definitely my broken femur at Rampage. As soon as the painkillers first first wore off after a few days, like I, I'd wake up in the middle of the night, like not able to get to the painkillers. It was so brutal. Oh, I was man. like on oxycod and then like really heavy duty stuff for like a week or two, and then I just hated how it made me feel. So I flushed it all down the toilet. Like I can't I can't take this stuff anymore. I'd rather feel the pain after the the first week or so. But yeah, it was that was bad. It was just like a never ending radiating sharp pain. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, tell us about that because we wanted to learn some of the details. You're like, you know, a, kind of the poster boy of make sure you buy travel insurance and you have oh, everything yeah, that you was need. Hectic. Yeah, and we learned a lot from you because you yeah. learned the hard way, so we could learn yeah. the easy way. Yeah, I mean, I, it was totally on me. Like, I wasn't that smart at the time. I I bought <laughs> travel insurance, like, not thinking about like pro athlete insurance. How that did was, you How did you buy it? Like, I, I bought like, my travel insurance. I think I went to like BCA in Whistler because I lived in Whistler okay. that summer. And um, I've done RBC, but I realized yeah. I could have been wasting my money because you get it when you have a yeah. credit card, right? Mm -hmm. You just have it automatically. Mm -hmm. Some credit yeah. cards. And that so. was like back in the NSMB.com days. I was just like a kid. I didn't know much about any of that stuff. I didn't give it the proper research. And I wasn't riding full time. I was getting bikes. That was it. So I didn't consider myself a professional athlete. I just needed travel insurance that would cover me for mountain biking in the desert. So that's what I bought. And because Rampo, Red Bull Rampage is a contest with prize money, that adds a whole new layer of insurance to it, which I didn't consider. And that's why I was denied. Damn. So that's what it came down to. So yeah. what was the first moment in which you realized, oh no, I'm screwed? 
Um, when I started getting letters from lawyers as soon as I got home and there was an ambulance bill that I had to pay right away. That was about five grand. Oof. And then there was another bill for over $40,000 <laughs> from the hospital. That's how much it costs to be in the hospital in Utah for three days. Damn. Get surgery. How many line items is that? Like three line items? I feel like, you know, you yeah. sometimes you see on the internet, like, like delivering a baby and it's yeah. like, uh, you know, it'd be like, cut the umbilical cord, $70, deliver the baby, $90,000 yeah. and uh, hand it over to the mom, $20,000. Yeah. I mean, healthcare is a business down there. It's a way different mentality than we're used to as Canadians. So yeah, I, I saw it broken down, like every single thing, like the food you ate, really? the service you got, it was all mm. a line item. I, the funny thing is I never paid that bill. <laughs> Nice. Oh, no, it's like I started just ignoring the phone calls from the hospital. Like, I don't need to go back there to ride. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and then damn. I did some research and the state of Utah has a statute of limitations of seven years, I think. And it's been it's almost been. 11 years now. So I'm wow. in the clear. Great success. Wow. Salt Lake yeah. City, here we come. <laughs> I, yeah, so... Uh, that worked out. Being Canadian helped. If I was American, it would definitely affect my credit. I'd there's some, there's some like sick kid in the hospital, like, please, nurse, may I have some more soup? And she's like, we can't. Mark Matthews stole all our money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think they're doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. So yeah. yeah, looking back, what would you do differently? Like, how do you make sure you're covered? Because I mean, even when I go and buy insurance for whatever the reason, I always in the back of my mind, I'm like, they're gonna screw me over some way. I, yeah. There's a, there's a there's a gap I'm not mm. filling somewhere. Yeah, I'm definitely really dialed on, on that side of things now with it. Like, not just from that learning experience, but just to be in my business to ride my bike and make content all the time. There's always a bit of element of risk. I don't know about you guys, but I have like my own disability insurance for myself. So if I can't say I get hurt enough that I can't ride for a whole year, I can still get a percentage of my annual income paid out to me through the insurance company. Hmm. So I have that set up. It's kind of expensive insurance, but it's worth it just to have that peace of mind, eliminate that risk and then Travel insurance, I get it through Tugo now. A lot of Canadian insurance providers use Tugo as their service. So you can like go on their website directly and actually get a slightly better rate and you can just choose your activity. So if you're gonna do like backcountry mountain biking that's above a certain elevation, you can even select that option for your year and add all these other elements to it and then buy it that way. And it's still quite cheap. It's like a few hundred dollars for the whole year. A few hundred dollars. Well, that beats yeah. a $5,000 ambulance. For sure, yeah. Which Jeez. I probably didn't even need to pay, but you know, I got scared and paid it. <laughs> Totally do to each other, nation. You love the show. You love the pod. You love the boys. Well, why don't you support us by purchasing some of our merch on MahaloMyDude.com. That's right, Matthew. We've got the finest selection of t-shirts, stickers, and hats you've ever seen. Plus, we even have feeding off each other sticker packs so that you can proudly show off your love for the show on a mug, laptop, your dog, your mom, whatever. And as a special gift to you, our beloved Chuthers, we're offering 10% off your next order with the code FEEDING. That's right, head to mahalomydude.com and use code FEEDING for 10% off your next order. And now, back, back to, to the, the pod. pod. Well, our friend uh, Jordan Boostmaster, we were with him when he had to take a heli from Whistler to VGH. Yeah. And yeah, that was gnarly. I remember that because I, I saw you guys that morning. We were doing some laps together oh, on opening oh, day. I had a migraine. I missed you, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, I missed or, you. I was running with like Kaz and Jason. Yeah. And yeah, we were doing some runs. That was before Jordan met up with everyone. Yeah, what a twist to the end of that day. We, yeah. he, he had to fly out and I didn't realize at, the, realize at the time that the bill would probably be on him. And I was just thinking yesterday, I want to message him and find out, did you, did you pay a massive helicopter <laughs> ambulance bill? Well, that's, reach all, out. that's all he should. Yeah, that's all he <laughs> should listening. have paid. He's not gonna pay it like at the hospital. But the uh, how I thought it works in BC is because it's the ambulance drivers' union is its own thing. Okay. So like uh, I, when I, I broke my ankle way back in Invermere, and I had to take an ambulance from Invermere all the way to Cranbrook, which is like a two-hour drive. I think it was like a six hundred dollar ambulance bill, just because. Yeah. Yeah. But then the surgery and everything was free. <laughs> but Canada, it's weird. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. You'd have to pay for the heli, but it also sucks. <laughs> it does. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's expensive. We have a lot of questions written down. We like, okay. we fired on questions. Yeah, that's pretty impressive for a last minute booking. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess I've known you for a while. So. Now there's too much. I don't know what to <laughs> okay. ask, guys. I mean, guys, I feel like Mark and me were really carrying this pod. You guys haven't said much, okay? You got to speak up over there, okay? People really want to hear from you, Dave. Yeah, who's this Dave guy anyways? I don't know. I mean, I feel like uh, <laughs> he could go on vacation. Someone suggested when we talk about bikes, he could just, you know, 
be it's in true. the Bahamas getting stem cells or something. We did, we did get that comment. It was pretty funny. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it was on the... Uh, Dylan Stark. He can't even remember. No, no, it wasn't the Dylan. It wasn't the Dylan one. It was the Cam... Cam oh, yeah, true. Cam McCall. Yeah. True. true. Yeah, they said that I just looked kind of zoned out in the corner and uh, looks like I could have just gone on a vacation. People don't forget. It's probably true. <laughs> you were on vacation. You were in Crankworks. Yeah, baby. So go go ahead, fire, riff a question. All right. You know what? No, 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 no. no, no, no I can't no. read it off Jason's <laughs> list. He's trying to give me a hand job uh, right here. <laughs> <laughs> no, based on what you know of Mark, I mean, I know that uh-huh. you've seen his face. You've edited his face a little bit. You know, that's like, true. Okay, I'll, okay, okay. Do you remember doing the mean comments? I do remember that. That was pretty funny. Yeah. What was your favorite one? <laughs> Napoleon Dynamite what a question. Napoleon Dynamite. That was Nap- a good one. Nah, yeah. That was a good one. What was it? it this, um, why does this guy sound like Kip from Napoleon yeah, Dynamite? Yeah. Like sound or look like? Look look like, I think. Wait. I don't know. I don't remember, but it was funny, whatever it was. It was hilarious. Yeah. But also, were you like wearing a similar looking outfit or the same color? Oh, yeah. Color? No, I was wearing a puffy jacket, but it was the exact same color as like <laughs> Kip's t shirt. <laughs> yeah, because I did the side yeah. by side in the edit. Yeah. But yeah, I was impressed because you had a little retort in the. I don't know if you pre-planned this, but you had a yeah, we, like, we all wondered. You were like, um, "Oh, you're just jealous." I've been talking to babes on the internet or something. <laughs> oh yeah, well, I mean, everyone knows that quote, so it was the first thing that came to mind. I, I wouldn't was, have had that in my back pocket. Yeah, that was really? pretty quick. I was impressed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. thanks. That was good. And then someone else said, uh, "Mark Matthews sounds like a South Park character, or or is it looks? I can't remember. It sounds sounds, <laughs> sounds like a South. Now, why is that? Why is that? Does Do that I? mean anything to you? No. I like that show though. Don't do the voice. Great show. Yeah. I think like at first I was like, what the hell does that? Uh, actually, yeah, maybe, maybe. There's a, lot, I mean, there's a lot of different character voices on that's, that show. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. that's like saying you sound like a Simpsons character. Like every character, <laughs> there's a whole plethora. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I guess the audience will be the judge today whether okay. uh, our guest sounds like a South Park yeah, character. Comment below what he sounds like. It was pretty hard to find mean comments on your on your stuff though. That's I mean, good. People aren't saying mean things about yeah. you. You've been doing this for a while. Tell us about how how you kind of got into the game. Because, I mean, Jason and I growing up, like, yep. you were inspiring us when we were oh, like, really? pretty cool. young kids. We were yeah. watching your, all your guys' videos, like you, filmed by Aaron LaRock. And, like, yep. you guys had a whole squad growing up. You guys were yeah, riding a lot. Had squad. A yeah, lot we had of sweet good... spots. The sand pit. Like, oh, all sand these pit. jump spots. And Jason, it would get yeah. Jason and I and our friends, like, super stoked. Really? Mm-hmm. It was yeah. kind of funny because being on the island, we would see everyone in Vancouver. It was kind of like the like we'd see all the guys on the shore. And that's who we looked up to, mm. like Gully and Ross and that crew. <laughs> um, yeah, I just started off in Victoria riding and met all those other guys like Andrew Sherry, Luke Fulton, Jarrett Moore, that whole crew. They, those were just like my friends growing up riding dirt jumps with. And then Aaron LaRock was in Victoria going to university, and that like his first year there. That's where we, where we met him. He would just like wanted to film us and started hitting up all the riders and. He would just come hang out with us when we were riding, and we just started making edits together organically. There was no, no plans or anything. It was pretty cool. It was fun because like he was learning as we were like we were learning tricks, and he was learning how to film better. Yeah, all at the same time. So it's been really, it's been really cool to see the progression of everybody over the years. Like seeing where Aaron is now, and where some of the riders are now. It's really cool. Absolutely feeding off each other. Exactly. <laughs> Definitely feeding back of the day. Yeah, no, it's awesome. I mean, to say we were inspired is like almost an understatement. It's like it really? changed our lives, man. I mean, yeah. like whatever LaRock was doing, we were like, how the hell did he do that? Mm-hmm. Trying yeah. to study it, the tricks that you guys are mm-hmm. doing. I'm like, well, I'll never learn that, but it looks cool. He was like one of the OG guys to film a sick edit. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. How, like, because you had parts in like what's next. Yeah. How does filming that feel like looking back and filming that how does it feel now filming like with an fpv drone in the alpine like what's changed other than yeah well everything? what's next was cool because aaron was just like a friend and he was still working at safeway at the time and he's like i'm gonna make this full-length video get some sponsors for it and then that was kind of his shift into full-time filmmaking so he like put a whole year into committing to that project and we filmed together all the time already anyways made little video videos together and that was fun because I kind of could pre-plan it a bit. It, it was kind of like that era where like New World Disorders and stuff were still out and there'd be like one really good video part coming out each year. And this was kind of Aaron's version of that. So I could spend like my entire season like building some jumps, working on some tricks and making a really good segment. And it was like our like Grom version of that. So we were pretty hyped. And now it's cool because that was kind of like the beginning of learning how that workflow is and what goes into a video. And now it's just become a habit and it's fun. Like, Working with FPV, like you're saying, is really 
nice because it's so refreshing. It's different. You don't see a lot of people doing it, and it's a whole new challenge. It's like you get that excitement again of filming something completely different. Yeah, I feel like you guys with your little the like squad out there was like almost the original YouTube kind of like putting web edits out like pretty consistently. Yeah, and then like is that kind of what made you want to just keep doing that as your career? Because essentially, it's same yeah, thing. I really liked making short edits that were fun. Like it was actually cool. Ryan from SMB and having access to you, Matt, we can make videos together. Yeah, so we've I made a few. Put out edits, but it was kind of like the days before anyone had YouTube on their radar. Like, I kind of wish we knew back then in hindsight, like if I had a channel then and actually uploaded my For own sure. content, because it would either go on Pink Bike or go on SMB or Vimeo. We never had like and then our, a place for our content to live that was just ours. We our whole own. Vimeo from NSMB got deleted. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like that era, no one like had their own personal brand. That wasn't even like a thing. No. So. In hindsight, I wish I did because it would have been hugely beneficial. I feel like it was like, I mean, at least for me, it was like 2016 when I made a YouTube channel called Matt Dennison. I mean, oh, really? and I was probably late to the game too. Yeah. I feel like mm -hmm. 2014, that, it, yeah. around there, maybe that's when people started to make those personal brands. Yeah. So what made me shift to a personal brand was just seeing, um, it was actually, I was on a road trip with Mason. We're on an SMB team trip and we were in Farwell Canyon writing really epic stuff and then. He was talking about his buddy, Casey Dean. Do you remember Casey? Yeah. The skier? Yeah. He had like 20,000 Instagram followers. Right. And I had got Instagram that week and I was just posting dumb stuff on there. Like just Mason posing and golden light. I was like, this is sick. You know, just like <laughs> hilarious stuff, just messing around with it. And he's like, man, you should focus on like taking some of our good shots and putting them up. And it's when Instagram was only photos. He's like, just post one thing a day and then engage with the platform. And I started doing that and the, my account started growing fast because no one else was really on that. And that was kind of like my thing, just short form. I've always liked photography and it's always been fun for me. So if it wasn't a shot of me, it was a, I had like a little DLSLR and I'd take a nice landscape photo of somewhere we were riding that was scenic and I'd post that up with my bike or something. And I'd always try to get something out almost every day on Instagram. And a lot of people were that consistent with it at, at that time. So that helped me. And then long form, I never really got a good handle on until COVID, I would say. I would share some sponsor edits so if it was like a marin branded video where i'm just riding for a couple minutes i would upload it to their channel and mine i would tell them i want this to live on my channel as well so i want to build up a gallery of good content and then i just started getting more comfortable talking on camera when i started working with scott bell actually we did a lot of vloggy stuff together because i noticed he did a lot more of that format and i thought it was cool and i wanted to get better at it and we filmed a set of mountain bike tutorial videos together. And then that really helped me having someone like film me every day for a few months talking to their camera. And then when COVID hit and there wasn't really much else to do, I wanted to show my trail building projects and actually document them. Cause I had always built trails to film, but I had never really shown the behind the scenes of it. So I figured I'm just gonna like keep myself preoccupied, film time lapses of everything I'm doing, talk about what I'm gonna build and then talk a little bit about it after I build it and tell the story a bit. And, yeah, I just got better and better at formatting those videos and it's just kind of progressed from there. So that's where I'm at now, doing a big mix of different formats. Yeah, I mean, the trail building videos that you do are remarkable. The, they're Remar remarkable? They're remarkable. <laughs> remarkable. <laughs> remarkable. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, I mean, they're works of art. It's Thanks. Yeah. Like, they're not just fun to ride, I'm mm. sure, but they're aesthetically pleasing just to look at. Yeah, I always have that in the back of my mind when I'm scouting new zones. Like, this would be really nice for filming. I mean, in my eyes, like Vancouver Island is synonymous with beautiful mm. looking trails. I mean, on the shore here, I feel like it's a little bit challenging. A lot of the areas that we ride through are kind of brown or just kind of like sticks or there's not yeah. a lot of like mm. vegetation. Vancouver Island's like very green, very mossy, very yeah. lush. Very lean mossy. Into that. Yeah. We have a lot of moss, especially like the lower elevations near the ocean. It was just, I stick to those zones because I can build you around. Yeah. Yeah. We I don't get like that really nice, like consistent fog you get on the shore. Like the shore on a foggy day. It's like a pretty unique feeling. You don't get that? Because I feel like yeah. I'm thinking back to some of these La Rock videos. Yeah. And like mm -hmm. the fog was perfect. I guess so. Yeah. Was, I don't know. I feel like I've had more days on the shore where it's like the fog's perfect all day long. It does hang around, right? Yeah. It, yeah. The, the weather hits the North Shore Mountains like a wall. Yeah. It, just, it literally stops. Yeah. And, but um, I remember Matt and I went to your place oh. 2013. 
and we filmed a video. Dude, that was ages ago. Yeah, I think it was called Island Avenue. We oh, slept wait. on your floor. Jason, yeah. were you there too? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's was what I that, by That was in Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, okay. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> not Dave, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no, Dave wasn't there. Yeah, Dave wasn't there. <laughs> I was there in spirit. What were you doing in 2013? Oh, I don't know. Just fucking chilling. Nice. <laughs> Fighting girls. Yeah. 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 No, he was making oh, YouTube yeah. videos. Oh, yeah. He had his own personal brand. He was doing, wait, five, I, he was doing North Vancouver Boys. Oh, wait, mm. I saw those. Yeah, man, they were those huge. Those were funny. <laughs> <laughs> he used to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. No, yeah, but, that was a lot of fun, though. I remember that project. Yeah, yeah, I remember, yeah, sleeping on your floor. I remember we Whose watched. Whose house was that? Your parents' house. It my, would have been my parents' house oh, in Victoria. Oh, yeah. sick. Uh, we watched SNL one night. It was okay. the what? it was the week YOLO came out by the Lonely Island. Oh, <laughs> they ripped my us off. The it's all coming we back. We made YOLO yeah. a year before that. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, Matt and I were testing out a really janky cable cam with Scott Secco. Okay, as yeah, a part I, of the filming. Was that one I made? That yeah, sounds made like I made a, it in in metal shop in high school. I guess yeah. three years prior. Yeah. Okay. Oh no no no! Actually, I was still going to the high school after I graduated to, to use their shop, <laughs> to yeah. find, and, find chicks and their materials. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and get dates, score dates with boys. Yeah, I used to go here. <laughs> <laughs> you were the Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, I wasn't the only one, man. There was other smart kids still uh, milking the. Uh, uh, careful. Uh, 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 wood shop. Metal <laughs> oh, okay. shop. Was, I, it, I mean, if the teacher liked you, he didn't care if you took materials. He's like, yeah, whatever. Anyways, uh, well, yeah, I built a jib, a camera yeah. jib. I built the ca uh, cable cam, mm -hmm. and it was pretty janky. And we pretty bad. We didn't use it a lot. There's Did like it? two shots in that. No, I mean, like prior to, oh, to oh, meeting oh, with yeah. you, we didn't use it a lot. So it's like, all right, we got to actually go and use this thing. I remember that thing. Yeah, it was. I mean, I don't even know how to describe it. So I probably have a, a photo somewhere, but uh, really janky. It was just like sheet metal, and uh, you know, I had a, I had like a whole cam. I guess like what T two I. It was a T two I on there, mm. or sixty D or something like that. I don't think we trusted the sixty on it. I just had like a, a little bolt, like a quarter inch bolt, and a wing nut attaching mm. that thing and then we had no there was no motor or anything it was all gravity fed and it slowed down with towels which is yeah. funny because the pros still do that mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i mean scott and i were still doing that four years ago until he finally got a motorized one. Oh yeah did yeah he? Oh, cool and last time i saw seco he was still doing that the the towel thing yep yeah well wait oh didn't he have an axe well i feel like we talked to someone who darcy or, had, was it darcy yeah, yeah. it was did, didn't they Wittenberg. have the towels uh, no, he said, uh, on the motorized one, if you brake too hard and you skid, you're oh, screwed yeah. basically. You can't. Oh, really? So he skidded one in the Worcester bike park into a tree and mm. blew up a red. Um, anyways, were you going to talk more about that trip when we, I think visited? so. Yeah. That was fun. Cause it was, yeah, it was yeah. like, it was definitely fun. Um, but right. I, it also was the first time I had seen the stuff that you had been building for years on the Island. You had like one jump line there. And I don't think people who watch your videos probably appreciate the size and yeah. like how well sculpted everything is and how scary it is. Because <laughs> watching you ride it when we were filming, I was like, online, I'm like, yeah, maybe I'd give that a go. And then watching you ride, I'm like, no, I don't need no, I, I'm just not going to hit that. Yeah. So one thing I find the hardest, I think, is translating everything to video to really capture how gnarly it is. That's what's made me really excited about shooting FPV with Anderson this week. It's, show, it's doing a better job at showing the scale of things. We were even like, we were making cuts last night where we would like speed ramp as I'm going off a big drop and then he's pointing down on the steep section before and you can really feel the speed and the, the steepness of the forest and you just don't get that on POV or even like a third person on ground shot as much. You, yeah, you had a video recently. Uh, I don't know how recently you built it, but it was like a big step down you've, you made. Yeah, off the rock? Yes. Yeah. Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, the mega drop. Yeah, That's the, what I called it. I, was, I watched a few of those videos. Yeah, they're pretty fun. Yeah. yeah. And that was exactly the same, same feeling. I'm like, I feel like I could do that. But I'm like, knowing yeah. Mark, I'd probably show up there and be like, this is fucking crazy. It's pretty scary, but it's got a huge landing. It's actually one of the easiest drops I've ever rode. Well, it's I, easier than the A-line rock drop. Like a, it's actually no less technical. No way. No, it is. It's <laughs> less technical, but it's like double. The, it's more than double the size. But the landing is like really nice you could go like halfway down and still land smooth oh as an ar armchair expert watching that video i was like mark scott this yeah. is easy what's he worried if you about? guys can come to the island we'll make a video about you guys trying the mega drop sorry i'm not available actually yeah you're, you're, you'll find some space <laughs> <laughs> the only thing i remember about that trip well obviously some some of the shots because we have the video but mm -hmm. the biggest memory was uh, going to red barn was oh it? the red barn sandwiches yeah, oh, yes. yeah. yeah. sandwiches are so good yeah i haven't returned since Really? Yeah. Oh man. But I was running up in price in the last ten years. Oh, did they? Yeah, inflation hit those sandwiches hard. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> I uh <No! laughs>
I was reading your <laughs> biography on uh, Marin's. Is it Marin? Marin? Go Marin. Marin. Yeah, Marin. 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 Marin County is what's named after Marin Bikes. Reading your bi- your biography, like the Who Are You uh, profile athlete page, and uh, it said like, "What's your favorite thing to eat?" It said a hearty, healthy sandwich. Oh, really? Yeah, that ties oh. in nicely with the red barn. That's probably what inspired that response. <laughs> <laughs> so wholesome. Yeah. Also, uh, other couple interesting tidbits. It said um, your first component sponsor you received when you were when it, when you were sixteen or seventeen, I think. Or no, no. I think even younger, like like my first year biking, I got a sponsor from this company called Danger Boy. Danger. <laughs> do you guys remember Danger Boy? I do remember Danger Boy. Yeah, so Boy. the owner lived down the street from me. Sorry, and here, you got the sorry to cut you off. You got your first component sponsor when you were sixteen, but in seven two thousand seventeen, you reached out to Marin. That yeah, so yes, tell, tell a story. Yes, um, I rode for a company called Danger Boy. I guess rode for they gave me a free handlebar and stuff, and I was Sick. a stoked Grom. Um, but yeah, it was really cool because the owner was like. Just really supportive and saw me. I had a couple little dirt jumps beside my house, just like on the little corner of my parents' lot right off the road. I'd have to like pedal down the street to hit them right by the stop sign. So the guy would see me dri- riding down the road, hitting my jumps. And I think I remember th- seeing that. He thought it was cool. So yeah, that was pretty. I was like frothing on that when I was 14. I was like, yeah, free stuff. <laughs> it <laughs> was awesome. Shit when you're a kid. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, all, suddenly yeah. you just like unlock the potential. Mm. People will just give me stuff for free. Totally. I just want to keep yeah. working harder for it. Yeah. All yeah. it took was just some cool jumps in your front yard. So now kids listening to this, like, yeah. I want free stuff. They're just going to start digging up their yard. Is that yeah. the path to? Well, I got, I got really lucky. So I would, I would just see like all these bike films online, like, you know, like the collective seasons, all the disorders. And I was like, I want to ride stuff like that. And just living in like 20 minutes outside of Victoria and then Saanich Peninsula, it's like pretty flat. There's not a whole lot there. It's like, there's more, I guess you guys know, it's like you were like the shore so close, but you're in Richmond when you're a kid. It's like it's so, the riding feels so far away. It was kind mm-hmm. of the same for me out there. So I would just like build my own stuff in the woods and it would always get torn down. And, and one day a couple of friends and I, we were like, I want to say like 16, 15 or 16. We were building like this really janky jump in a ditch right by a mailbox, like a community mailbox. And this lady just rolls up in her nice Mercedes. She's like, what are you guys doing in the ditch? You should come come build some jumps on my property. I live across the street. And it turns out she's the wife of the CEO of Harley Davidson Canada. They have like this huge property. They have like this beautiful horse barn with like Arabian horses and a groundskeeper. They were on like, I want to say at least 10 acres. And they're like, yeah, you can use this little plot of land kind of beside the horse ring. And it was this really nice like orange sandy dirt on a slope. And it would get re- really dry and just fall apart in the summer. But all winter, I had a spot to build jumps. And they, they let us do whatever we wanted as long as we kept it tight-knit with it, just a few friends and we didn't invite everyone over there. So it was like this really unique scenario where I could ride to the spot from where I lived. It was only like a 15-minute bike ride. And I would go to this person's epic property and just with a shovel and just dig my own jumps. And wow. I had like, I probably had like eight jumps in there at one point. It was pretty cool. And I learned so many tricks there. What? Yeah, it was really cool. Like <laughs> even like, like... so lucky. Like That's any, a dream. Yeah, like anytime I'm out in like... Like that area, I like always try to pop in and visit them and like thank them again. I'm like, you guys are awesome. Like it was so cool you supported kids that way. Did you ever ride one of their hogs? No. They never what? they never got you on a Harley Davidson? Oh. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not the pigs, Jason. Yeah. yeah, it's the James's family though. So big shout out to them. They were amazing people. Oh damn. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That was in Saanich. Yeah, in North Saanich. Cool. What was the address? <laughs> uh, I don't remember. Oh, okay. <laughs> 42069 yeah. <laughs> Harley Way. At Vancouver Island is just so amazing, man. There's just so much to explore. I feel like like very underrated for, you know, especially yeah. when people come to town, they want to see everything. Like they want to see yeah. Vancouver downtown. Whistler, but God, you could spend yeah. a whole year around here traveling to a new spot every for day. For sure, yeah. Still like BC in general, we have so much. We're so lucky. Yeah. I feel like sea to sky is all the hype, but there's so much beyond that. The island has so much riding, the interior. I've been wanting to go back to Revelstoke. I haven't been there in like five years or more. And it, it looks amazing right now. Jason's favorite place to ride. Is Revelstoke. it? Revelstoke. Yeah, so. yeah. I'm trying to make a trip that happened all year, but it just hasn't lined up with my schedule. But the new resort looks awesome. It's good. Yeah. It's very big. Very tall. Cool. Yeah. Lots of riding. Good jumps. Good jumps. Yeah, but yeah, BC's got everything, man. We're, we're so lucky here. I mean, Anderson's mind's been blown this week just seeing a few spots on the island and we haven't even rode the shore yet. So, Yeah. <laughs> It's funny when you're saying like growing up, the mountain biking seems so far and I'm thinking, well, like Mount Provo is like not that far from you at all. And it's no. like all double black diamonds, yep. Stevie Smith trained, yep. like amazing. 
Yeah, I even like even where I live now, because I'm a little more north up in the Comox Valley. It's an hour and a half to get there, but I still ride there a lot in the winter. It's worth the drive for sure. Yeah, I do shuttles all day, and those are definitely the best downhill trails on the island. Maybe even some of the best in BC. Have you lived on the island your whole life? Yeah, I lived in Victoria growing up, and then I would do Whistler in the summers for a few summers in a row. Victoria in the winter when I was going to university. And then lived with Jordy Lund and Eric Lornick for two and a half years. Oh, yeah. On Upper Lonsdale from like 2010 to 12. On uh, Chesterfield? Yeah. Chest- yeah. And then I was with Gully for a year in 2014. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Well, I, uh, you remember that. I, I, yeah, I do because, yeah, 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 yeah. We filmed roommates. Exactly. Of yeah, course. Of yeah. course. Well, I, I forgot like when I first got my job with NSMB, you guys are pretty close. Like Cam's first place that he lived. I like. I remember seeing your place. Yeah, and I went in for a second. I, I guess that was the Jordy house, the Jordy and Lorney house. The Jordy and Lorney house. Yeah. Man, that must have been a rowdy house. Yeah, I, I mean, I was just really excited to live with those guys because I like was, was just wanting to be a pro rider so bad, and they were like, Eric was pretty much doing that. He was working at Co Bikes and had a bit of a riding salary as well. Was could do all the events he wanted to, and Jordy was just like a big deal back then, right? So. Yeah, it was cool. And I'd, knew, I'd known Jordy for a few years already. I had been riding his yard. And they were looking for another roommate. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll come move to Vancouver and live with you guys. Did, it's pretty awesome. Did you guys just like turn that house upside down or what? Well, actually, our first month living together, we lived in Lynn Valley in this illegal suite. That this like sketchy dude was running. There was like, my room had no windows. It was just a room <laughs> in the middle of a suite. And then the other guys had really small rooms. And then all of a sudden, he's like, yeah, there's a leak. You guys have to move out tomorrow. Oh, no. And we're like, uh, that doesn't seem legal. But, you know, being like 19-year-old <laughs> kids, we're like, well, we don't know what to do about this. So. Oh, shit. So yeah. he just laughed. Jordy was like the older, like, mentor for us. And he was like 25. <laughs> 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 yeah. So it was pretty funny. Um, we found a way of our spot right away on Chesterfield. And it was, it was dialed. We had a lot of good times up there. It's like the upstairs of a house. We had a shed for our bikes and everything. We'd have house parties all the time. Does this culture still exist in North Vancouver now? Like, are groups of, like, mountain biking kids renting homes? Like, are, is the price know. of rent just too high now? What's the deal? You get enough dudes together, you can probably make it happen. <laughs> yeah. <I laughs> That's what we, you tell me all the time, <laughs> I mean, I think we're each paying, like, 700 bucks a month for our own rooms. 700 bucks? Yeah. So, it's it was a little good. over two grand a month for a three-bedroom upstairs suite of a house. Yeah. So Gully didn't live with you at the Jordy. Lauren. No, that was a different place we lived on. Oh yeah, we we have a story, you? and you th- this is your opportunity to validate the story. I don't know okay. if there's a beef involved in this story, but yeah. it's it's funny. Yeah, it, it, it entertains us, and I want to know its accuracy. Okay. Gully says that one time uh, he came back from a trip, and uh, he went. <laughs> He went to your bedroom and there was nothing there anymore, but just a garbage bag in the middle of the room. And he texted you and he's like, Hey, did you move out? And you were like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was no. like, I was like talking about going back to them for a bit, but we hadn't like made plans and he was traveling so much. So I just started making a move and I was still paying rent, but I was like ready to move out. So, I mean, he was yeah. on a trip. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Right. What are you going to do? I Ask mean, for permission. I was also like, yeah, I would. I definitely wouldn't do that now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe a heads yeah. up would have been nice. Yeah, but. yeah, exactly. But yeah, I, I didn't like leave him hanging to dry, like without paying. I was still paying rent until he found someone. But I just was like ready to move. I was like, I don't know. I was like in a a weird place then too because it was right when my leg was injured. I just started getting um, better offers from Specialized, and then I got hurt at Rampage and like lost all my sponsors, lost everything, and. Uh, was working at a shop part time on the shore, and I was just like, I don't know. It was like a cool year, but I was like ready to move on. I was like, I need to get into a different scene, and I just like had the urge to leave, so I just started <laughs> moving. I'm like, well, I can stay with family for a few months on the island while I figure out a new place to live, and I just wanted to get back to that and like start fresh. I just like had the urge to do that. Gully was traveling a lot, and uh, yeah, he, I think he was gone for like a couple weeks, and I was like, I'm just gonna start moving out, and I'll, I'll just keep paying rent until you can find someone. And that's what I did. <laughs> did you guys get over it? Is it water under the bridge now? Or yeah, I don't. I don't think it was an issue. I okay, don't know. I'd have to ask him about it. But <laughs> okay, um, okay, yeah. What? Well, we, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely a better communicator now, so that would never happen. But that's good. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, whatever. We, yeah, it was kind of funny. The old bachelor life. Bachelor yeah, exactly. Bad, right? Yeah. 
try to figure life out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How can you, how that can was you a fun it? house, though. We, we had good times for a year. Yeah, so yeah. how long would, did you guys live together? I think from like, oh, might have not even been a year. Might have only been like, I can't remember. But I just under a year. I guess at the time I was working with NSMB and I was supposed to be making them like a handful of videos okay. every month. Yeah. And I guess you, yeah, so you were a sponsored rider by NSMB. Yes. Did you win Air Apprentice? I did in 2012. You did? The year I lived with Gully, I actually wasn't riding for NSMB anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah. When we'd made the video? Yeah. When we did roommates, I was riding for Nolly Bikes. Okay, I'm yeah. just trying to figure out like so. J- Mark and I we made a video called Roommates and the yeah, idea. How did it start? It starts with like um, they're up in a bunk bed. It's, it, it begins yeah. on a on a, in camps on a paper room? cup with a string attached. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was yeah. or maybe his uh, son's room. I don't know. Okay, yeah, the, it, toys everywhere, and it starts on the uh, cup, and then it follows the 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 path of the string, and then it's yeah. Mark, and he's like, "Hey, are you awake?" And then it cuts down to the bottom bunk, and it's Gully. He's like, "Yeah, are you?" <laughs> and it goes back to Mark. Yeah. And then they, and then he's, they, they're like, "You want to go riding tomorrow? Yeah, let's go after work." And, da, da, da. and then yeah. the next day, they're like in the boardroom, and we shot in a law office. Yeah, downtown. That was yeah. funny. Ah, must have been like Pete Rogerman's. Uh, I was gonna okay. say, how did you get that location? Like I that. don't know. I, dude, those are the golden days. You just yeah. like end up in a law office. Now it's like we can never get a law office oh. without paying ten grand. Yeah, I'm tough. pretty sure you called me to ask if you could use my office. Really, back then? Yeah, I think so. Oh, or wow. I remember, I remember you guys shooting in an office. Yeah. So yeah, we had like ten extras, like background actors in there, and it was just yeah. you guys misbehaving. We had a fake boardroom, uh, like sales meeting, and then you guys go on lunch break, and then we have like the slow mo shot of you walking out of the skyscraper, and this is like, I don't know, Burrard Street. I'm not sure. <laughs> what is it like? What do they call it? Bent. Burrard One or something like the big building there, mm-hmm. Bentall One. Bentall One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bentall. Maybe it was Bentall One, and I put I placed on a tripod to shoot uh, Mark and Gully in suits with a full face helmet in hand, walking slow mo. You know, cool guys don't look at explosion style mm-hmm. out the front door, <laughs> and like instantly, as soon as I put that tripod down, security, 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 security. Yeah, <laughs> we had to go to a few skyscrapers, I think, to I think so pull it off. There were some good stair gaps to be had that day too. Yeah, so then yeah. we 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 then like go into a riding segment, and it was you guys shredding around like BC Place off the staircases. Yeah, where else did we sick? Go? We found another really big stair gap, kind of like what's that zone called? It was right near BC Place as well. And then we did some. We had a little ramp. We took around North Van. Yeah, your ramp. We like hop onto a fence and. Yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, we're doing yeah. all sorts of wacky yeah. stuff, and then we shot some uh, trail riding on the yeah. shore. Yeah, on Cyprus. But that video came together pretty well. It was fun. We, I, I used a song that had been um, used before in, I guess, a New World Disorder. Or How something. dare you? Okay. What What's the title? Do you know? Do you know what? What the song? Is? Yeah. No, like, I can't remember. I could tell. Was I it? I it. think I know the song. So I remember like vividly, like Annie Up by M O B. Yes. Annie Up. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was sick. As we we're walking out of the building, it just dropped. There's, is there a lot of uh, curse words in this? Are they? I believe there's N-words? some ends. Yeah, there's some ends. Mm. A lot of ends. Mm. I and I think I just like sometimes you're making an edit, you just got attached to a song and you can't leave it. And back yeah. then, when we we're making videos, the copyright music copyright wasn't that much of an issue, especially on yeah. Vimeo. Yeah. So I was like, ah, this song is so sick and it matches the vibe. I know it's been used before, whatever. Which is like a big faux pas in mountain biking. You never, yeah. you, you never steal. We call it <laughs> song jacking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he song jacked me. Yeah, yeah. Um, They're very important to include song in that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, years later, we uh, remastered the video. I took out that that song and we replaced it with another far less, far more lame song. And now it's on our YouTube channel. It's on Mahalo My Day. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, roommates. You, you can, can watch, watch it, it now. Yeah. yeah. R- roommates brackets 2015. Could be. Yeah, sure. it is. Yeah. 2015. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, and then it ends with my favorite scene. It's You see a stream of urine in a urinal. And then moments later, a second stream in the same urinal. And then it backs up and it's you and Gully with your pants down, peeing in the urinal, high-fiving. Yeah, I that remember that because awesome. Gully was like, I love being roommates. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, me too. <laughs> High-five. We're crossing streams. I believe that was the My Package um, oh. uh, like oh, yeah, a, headquarters that. or something. Yep. Nice. Didn't Which is an underwear company, yeah. which is no longer My Package. I is believe. it Beneath? Yeah, it was Beneath. Beneath. Yeah. yeah. Cross swords and beneath. Yeah. Mm. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. 
Wait, uh, there's another story I heard. I don't know if I'm uh, just throwing people under the bus. Have you ever fell asleep under a car? <laughs> under a car? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. Where did this come from? Well, you're a sober man now, right? People don't forget. Yeah, I don't really drink much at all anymore. Just oh, okay, well, yeah. this wasn't a drinking thing. I believe it was uh, an edible thing. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. I, mean, I don't want to put you on the spot. But I know exactly what you're talking about You did about say now. we could talk about anything, so. Yeah, okay. I can tell you a story about this. Because this, um, Andrew Santos told me this story yesterday. Okay, yeah. So uh, it's when I lived with Jordy and Eric, and... Jordy was away, but Gully came over, and it was me and Eric, and Eric had made a big tray of weed brownies and put them in the fridge, and I'd never had edibles in my life. I don't even smoke weed, so I thought it'd just be fun to try one, so I ate one. Almost an hour goes by, and nothing has hit. Like, being the dumb kid I was, I didn't realize it takes a few hours to kick in, so I just grabbed a few more and took them to go, and then we go to the movies. Uh, we went to go see a horror movie. I want to say, like, Paranormal Activity or oh, something. Oh, no, God. <laughs> yeah, so we're, like, down at Park and Tilford Mall, and we're watching the movie there, and I get about like 10 minutes into it, like the first scary scene. And then as soon as like the spirit comes out into the room or whatever it is, I start, I'm like not able to feel my body anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I could feel my, I couldn't feel my arms or legs, but I could move them. And I was like, okay, something is really wrong here. So I ran to the bathroom and the movie's like start splashing water on my face. I'm like, how come I can't feel the water on my face? What's going on? And I like freak out. And then like, I run outside and like lay in the back of my truck and then I, Call up Ross Measures because Ross knows all the answers to everything. Right? He's like our dad. I'm like Ross, like what do I do? What do I do? He's like you're just having a THC overdose. You'll be okay. I'm like, I'm like, dude, I'm freaking out. He's like, go back in the movie, and hang out with those guys. <laughs> and then uh, I just hung up. And then um, I just remember like some homeless guy yelling at me. I mean, getting scared. So I ran across the parking lot and ended up down at the river there. And I just like just kept splashing water in my face in the river and like started getting feelings in my limbs again. But I was really nervous, and like an hour and a half ago, by this point, the movie's almost over, and I was exhausted from panic, so I just laid down in the box of my truck and just stuck, stood up at the sky until those guys came out of the movie and saved me, and then they drove us back. <laughs> so you weren't under a you car. You weren't under. I wasn't under a car. I was laying in the box of my truck. Yeah, that's way more so normal. Yeah. We're clearing it up, yeah. okay? Yeah. We're, we're yeah. good now service we're providing yeah. here for you, yeah. Mark. And after that, I've been like a little traumatized when it comes to edibles. I'll kind of it, stay away from them. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those ones hit. Those hit uh, hard. Okay, so we our, our the version that I heard was that uh, you were in the uh, theater and you said, "Guys, I got to go to the clinic. I got to go to the medical clinic." <laughs> okay. And then you went to uh, I don't know. You left, and then Gully looks over at Lorna and he says, or I guess, he, and he just looks over and he's stoned. And Lorna says, "Hold on for the ride, buddy." And then oh yeah, he, he kept telling me things like that. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, you're going to be fine. Just chill and enjoy it. I'm like, this is not enjoyable. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> so you left. And then uh, the story, as I was told last night, you, they, Lorne and Gully, they went to the parking lot and they were going to leave. And then they heard, hey, guys. And then you roll out from underneath <laughs> the truck and you had just been taking a nap on the asphalt. Oh, okay. No, I was in the box. Wow. Well, this is a classic game of telephone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That got messed up. This is a good... So this I remember staying at the like sky, minutes. trying to make the sky look normal. I remember that vividly. <laughs> trying to make the sky look well, normal? Well, like, not that I was like hallucinating, success. but like just trying to like make everything feel normal again by looking up at space. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. You were locked in. I was pretty locked in. Wow. <laughs> so good. <sighs> Should we do a blind ranking? Yeah, you got one. I got a blind ranking. Okay. Mark, do you know what a blind ranking is? Um, is that like when you rank something without knowing what the next thing is exactly so, okay so i have five things written out okay um that you're gonna have to rank and yet you're not gonna know what's coming next sure so one to five um the theme this week is sharks mm. okay Ooh. are you're, you a shark guy well people call me mark the shark but i'm not necessarily an expert you don't have to be an expert but you know sharks yeah okay okay so this is blind ranking sharks with mark the shark okay it's on brand okay Shark number one, tiger shark. Two. I don't even, I, why? I don't know. It's, they're kind of cool looking. I don't even have an image in my head of what a tiger shark looks like. This this it's, shark in my head is striped orange and black. That's exactly mm -hmm. it. And it says they're great. <laughs> hey, Tony the tiger. <laughs> but I can't, I don't know what's real. Shark two, the whale shark. Hmm. 
Five. <sighs> if it has the word whale in it. It's not Ooh. a shark. <laughs> it can't be both. Yeah, Who are you? Yeah, make a decision. Pick right a at the back of the line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next shark is hammerhead shark. Hammerhead. I've always thought they were kind of weird looking, so I'm going to give it a four. <sighs> Ooh, wow. Really? I mean, when I mean, you're a kid. They're badass, but. When you're a kid, though, hammerhead sharks are like the coolest thing in the world. I guess. Mm. But now I'm with you. They're kind of freaky. They're freaky. Yeah. Uh, okay, next one is the great white shark. Number one. Yeah, it's guess. like the poster child of sharks, the great white. Yeah, that's a safe answer. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, then your last shark in number three is the goblin shark. Cool. What the heck is that? I seen? don't even know what that is. <laughs> it sounds sick. You guys it better be, sounds cool. like it's from that movie. I hope it's better than the watch. hammerhead. Uh, it's gross. It's is it? Super oh, gross. yeah. It's goblin it's all over oh. the place. Ew. Brother, ew. Oh. oh. Yeah, so that's your number three shark. Okay. It looks like when you've had a, a, a THC brownie <laughs> and you got scary. dry mouth and your top lip won't go down. <laughs> they are often found <laughs> in the beds of trucks. So. Mm. That's true. That was probably me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Great white number one. What's the most famous great white? Is it? Jaws. What's the, do you remember what the shark's name? Is Bruce. Oh, I thought it was Kenny. No, it's Bruce, and that's why the shark in Finding Nemo is also named Bruce. It's an homage. Well, thanks, Dave. I was asking. Fun more. fact uh, of the day. Ooh. I'm going to argue with that. I think the most famous shark is... Do, 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 baby shark. Oh, do, baby do, shark. Do, 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 do. Baby shark didn't make the list? Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's a it was, uh, you fucked know, up. I did ask for, for neat notes and I didn't Clown see world. Any. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll give Baby Shark an honorable. Wait, so I, are you actually stoked on sharks or what? Is Because they call you Mark the Shark. Is it just because it rhymes? It's because it, it like, rhymes. <laughs> oh, well, yes. you, you also made a feature called Sharknado. I did. Yes. Mm. What? what? what is, it was because I built a bunch of shark fins. Yeah. And I thought it was cool. And then my name is Mark. So it'll kind of. Came together. I don't get and it. And Sharknado's a cool movie. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen it. <laughs> is it? Really? Yeah, I haven't seen no. it. No, okay. Is it a flop, Dave? It's a, I've never seen it, but it's it's a on purpose so bad it's good kind of. Yeah. Thing. Right. There, there's, I think it might be Sharknado 2 or 3, but there is a scene <laughs> where someone like revs up a chainsaw and they jump into a shark's mouth and chainsaw their way through the shark. Oh. Of course. Yeah. So but it's that kind of movie. So it's like the animal movies, like yeah. Cocaine Bear. Mm -hmm. That right away, you're like, ah, that sounds stupid. If you have enough weed brownies, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it a shot. <laughs> hey, we didn't talk about how you rode 365 days in a row. Oh, yeah, last, did that last year. year. I did. Like, yeah. I, that was incredible. We were all tuned in watching. Like, really? Cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, did you I, make every day? Yeah. I, I went for a ride on New Year's Day with my buddy Evan, and it was like a little bit of snow in Nanaimo, and it was a sick day. And I was thinking, well, January 1st could be the coldest day of the year. So if I can ride today, why can't I ride every day? And I kind of put up an Instagram story saying I was going to do it. And then immediately thought it was a bad idea because I got a whole bunch of DMs being like, sick, can't wait to watch you all year. I'm like, uh, okay, I guess I'm locked in now. But yeah, it was, it was actually like harder to document than I'm actually ride. Like going out and filming yourself riding something every day is a lot more work than actually just going for a ride. And mm -hmm. there was days that were barely rides. Like I'd come home from the airport at 10 p.m., stop at the skate park on the way, do like a bar spin fly out, go home just to get a clip, just things like that. It was like a lot of short rides. I I think my biggest ride last year was still less than 40K. I didn't go on very many big mountain bike rides. It was just a lot of short sessions. Were you tired all the time? <laughs> no, because it was like small rides. Like I'm saying, it, wasn't, it yeah. wasn't exhausting. I think the hardest thing was just like trying to schedule everything. Like That's schedule I mean. my life around it. Yeah. It's more yeah. like the mental aspect. Yeah. It. It's like, like, where are you going to... if. We, if we had to ride 365 days on the shore, I'd be like, I yeah. don't know where to ride today. Uh, like when I did that trip to Mexico last year for that urban race, my I got to my hotel room at like 11.30 p.m. And I was like, I got to uh, I gotta get my bike together so I can ride before midnight. And I, and I had a roommate who was another racer. This I forget the guy's name. Um, but he's like, dude, what are you doing? He like came out of the shower and my bike was already built. And I'm like, gearing up? I can go for a quick night ride. <laughs> I'm, I'm moving out. <laughs> yeah, I'm moving out. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Here's my garbage bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. No. Yeah, it was funny. I was like, go hit a stair set, come back to the room. I like, you know, I just have to get a clip before just, midnight. Just a cool 200 million views before I go to bed. You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah, it's going to get a real. Yeah. The biggest thing riding every day gave me was like way more confidence than I've ever had. Even if it's only five minutes a day, that consistent muscle memory. It's You're always sharp, especially mentally. I think that's the biggest thing. Even if you're not really developing your bike skills as much, your your confidence goes way up. So I've been saying it to so many friends of mine, I know even like, if, even if you only have time for like a 10 minute ride in the morning before work, especially people who live near the bottom of a trailhead, 
Like just make it happen because it's going to really help your ride in so much. Even if you don't get a, like a long ride in for like weeks, if you go for a quick five minute ride, it'll help you a lot. It's huge. hundred percent. Yeah. I, I agree. But every day, oh my God, yeah. did you really do it? You never took, you never missed a day. You never Didn't miss like, a day. You know, you're over like a minute over past yeah. midnight or anything. I got close to midnight a few times, but I guess technically it was the next day when I was in Mexico because they're two hours ahead. But it was still right for midnight, so counts. It counts. Send it I, to the press. Guys. I got 365 clips over the year. So. Uh, it's super impressive. Yeah. I mean, I would just busting your balls. I mean, it's yeah. like that's uh, yeah. Were you like one and done? You're like okay, that's I did it. I the did hardest it. part was editing the video after because I kind of like put things off. <laughs> it was like one week before New Year's Day. I'm like I want to get this out on YouTube the first week of the year. Like a, a compilation of yeah. Everything? Like maybe I shot like a 10 minute GoPro clip. I'm like okay, what's the best moment? Because I took a few seconds from each day. And the video still ended up being over 20 minutes long. Wow. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. There's there's not a lot I would do 365 days in a row. Yeah, it's not super fun. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't regret it? No, I don't. It was a fun project. It was a fun challenge. Cool. So what are you looking forward to this year? Like you got anything cool on the in the works? Or I know you got a you got a rove, right? Yeah, this that's is a project a, you've been working on like for a, a while now. That's like a Business idea I've had for years, and we finally kind of launched it this year, a friend and I. He's uh, someone who went on a tour with me five years ago. So I don't know if you've seen that I've been promoting trips to Mexico. Usually I, I do something where like once a year I'll go down with Oaxaca Bike Expeditions, and we have a deal where they give me commission to promote. like per So per customer I get per commission, and then he pays for my flight if I get enough people to come down. And one of the people who came to ride with me actually in a, on a Tibet trip, even prior to that, thought this was really cool and he would like to find more tours like that with other athletes to ride with or just find fun mountain biking experiences rather than just like searching through tour companies. If there was a platform that existed that highlighted all the best experiences you could find, that would be awesome. And this is my friend Karim, who is my business partner in this. He got really excited about the concept and collectively we came together and we essentially like built a platform from the ground up. He's a web developer, so we built a website that has like an integrated chat, booking, Stripe payments, everything. And now tour companies can go on rove.ca and they can, if they don't have a great website themselves, but they have a really good, nice experience they can offer people, they can, they can go on our website, they can cre create a tour, integrate their payments and communicate with their customers. It's like all streamlined subscription service. So it's pretty cool. We just finally got it launched this year. Took a long time to develop. Yeah. I remember seeing Rove things like a few years ago, but it wasn't yeah. officially launched. Yeah. It wasn't officially launched. It was just kind of like building a brand, kind of experimenting with the concept mm -hmm. Javier at Oaxaca Bike Expeditions has been really open to the idea. And two years ago, we sold out a trip via Rove and we were handling all the payments ourselves. And it, it just became way more work for me for no extra amount of money. So I was kind of like, why am I doing this? I need to change up the model. We can't just take a cut of each sale. We need to just not even handle the payments directly. And that's when we decided to pivot to a subscription model service. And even that took over a year to build because building a platform from the ground up is an insane amount of work. Hmm. Can you uh, go on an Iceland trip through Rove? Because I know yeah. you've been there a few times. And yeah, I have. Um, so there's a tour operator there called Ice Bike Adventures. They do the best trips in Iceland, I would say. And yeah, they like we don't have any Iceland trips listed there right now. Currently, the only live trip is Mexico through Javier's business, Oaxaca Bike Expeditions. And then there's going to be a few more popping up soon. A handful of operators have created tours, but they haven't activated them yet on the platform. Once a tour operator activates their trip, it will show up on the front page. So we expect more stuff to appear soon. Um, but yeah, anyone can make a tour on there and they can publish it if they're pay paying for the service. And yeah, I'm in communication with a few Iceland operators and some of the guys involved in Ice Bike. And it would be really great to build a tailored trip in Iceland based on my experience there. Yeah, I, I know you, uh, you've done a lot there. I've wanted to go for a long time because my yeah. last name, Dennison, has Icelandic roots. Yeah, it's, that's uh, cool. And I, I want to go and find my long lost Denison family members. Maybe they're not lost. I can only assume. <laughs> I'd do some mountain biking and all that, but uh, I don't know. Never, never, never managed to make it happen. So yeah, once a, you get up on that website, maybe I'll take a look. It's a, such a cool place. It's like this pretty small volcanic island, and the mountain biking isn't like really like the actual riding isn't amazing, but like the places you ride are. So it's like all about the experience of being there. You get like fun little descents, but most of it is just like 
trekking from point A to B all day. Well, Same crazy well, stuff along the way. Dave really doesn't like Iceland. Dave's He's leaving. So no, he doesn't like it. He's moving? He's bored of this. <laughs> Dave? That was the rare Dave middle of the pod <laughs> pee. Yeah, yeah. I thought he would just wet himself, to be That's honest. Funny. Why? Is it feeling moist over there? Oh, God. Oh. I should not have touched that. Brother, ooh. <laughs> Brother, ooh. Mark, you're also a, uh, oh, man. I, Dave's not going to be in the, this is the best conversation of the day. You're a cat dad. I am a cat dad. You're a cat dad. I've seen you carrying cats and backpacks yeah. with bubbles on them. <laughs> yeah. What's, what's the cat daddy life like? Yeah, we got a couple cats over COVID, Maine Coons. They're a very dog-like breed, so you can, they're very trainable. So we have them least trained. They can come on hikes with us. They play fetch. They're very cool cats. What, what kind of cat? Maine Coon. They're, Maine they're a larger Coon. breed. Yeah, they're both close to like 20 pounds each. What makes them, oh, is that what makes them like a dog? Well, the just day? like their demeanor, they're like very laid back. They're very trainable. Um, and yeah, they're just, it's a really easy breed to own and have fun with. Someone the other day asked me, uh, are you a uncertain cat, a certain cat, uncertain dog, or certain dog? Don't think about it, just answer. Okay. He's thinking about it. <laughs> I'm uncertain <insert> everything. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like an uncertain cat. Probably, yeah. I said I was a uh, uncertain cat, actually. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm like, I, you know, I'm cleanly. Everybody knows on the pod, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm cleanly guy. I uh, Maybe I'm, a, you know, I, I, a bit more like in the shadows, maybe. <laughs> you know? You are the, the night. Cat? <laughs> <laughs> Dave, what about you? Uncertain cat, certain cat, uncertain dog, certain dog. What are you? Don't think about it. Put oh, those headphones on. I heard you say unsir, and I was like, excuse me? What? Oh, that's hot. Uncertain cat? Are you an uncertain cat or a certain cat or an uncertain dog or a certain dog? There's no joke. Just don't, don't ask. Don't make a big deal about my question. Just fucking play the I'm game. A certain dog. You're what? Certain dog. A certain dog. Ooh. Well, I don't I, know about that, man. I, I have no idea that. what you're talking about. So. <laughs> well, what, what what makes you say you're an uncertain? You're a certain dog, though. Because I certainly prefer dogs over cats. Well, it's not really what you prefer. It's more like you. Like mm. if you were a cat or a dog. Yeah. And whatever your perception of what a dog and a cat is. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I would definitely be a dog. I'm definitely not a cat. No, you don't live in the shadows. <laughs> no, I don't. Cats are cats are weird. Did you, sorry, I don't, Mark. I don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you could hear what we're just talking I about. I heard yeah. nothing. Okay, yeah. Mark, he's cat dad. He's got a couple <laughs> cats. It's okay. And uh, yeah. yeah, wait. Don't they have like Instagram accounts too? They're they massive. do. Yeah. They're super How many followers awesome. do your fucking cats have? <laughs> Over 200K now. No, I don't know the exact no. number. Yeah. Yeah. The cats actually, it's become Chelsea's full time job. Really? Yeah. What she she collaborates with that? like, she promotes pet friendly accommodations. So we get to stay at different Fairmonts around yeah. BC. You're just living Wait, the dream, dude, Mark. It's, it's like, so that's, a, that's what the non riding days are. Go, go to the Fairmont, hang out with the cats. What's, what? the, what's the account hikes. called? I'm pulling it up. A cat named Fig cat. with dots in between. A dot oh, cat yeah, dot yeah. named Fig. Oh yeah, it's verified. verified? Yeah. Two hundred and sixty six thousand followers. <laughs> verified. We she can't also even has get like, verified. She also has a TikTok account for it. And oh, how many followers? I don't know. It's gonna be way more. It's still over hundred on TikTok. I think oh. it's, it's smaller than Instagram. Damn. Mm. She doesn't post as much on there. Are you guys? So you guys are getting the free accommodations? You guys get money too? You guys get paid? She gets a few she brand deals. Full... So she she has like a long term contract with Chupanion Insurance. So pet insurance. Oh, that's a and, good sponsor. Which is, a, yeah. So we still, like, we buy pet insurance because she, she, like, she's very, like, about organic partnerships. Like, she's very strict on that. So we pay for Trupanion. So she hit up Trupanion. And, Who, Chelsea? Yeah. Okay. And then we worked out a deal. Like, she worked out a deal with them. And now she works with them at a few months at a time. And then Zwee Pets is another sponsor for the cat. So it's, like, really healthy, wet cat food. And, yeah. So Have you ever cool. tried it? No. <laughs> Have you tried cat food? Um, I don't know if I ever have, but honestly, it looks not bad. Really? Yeah, it looks not bad. I probably have that over some like nice, a dog kibble. Like some nice venison out of a can. Yeah, I mean, yeah. why not? I mean, Put like, it on your crackers. Wheat spam. What's yeah. the fucking difference? That's yeah, pretty much the same thing. Don't say we. <laughs> <laughs> you eat well, spam? I mean, humans. Uh, yeah, probably the only time I eat spam is like when I'm in Hawaii because they, oh, okay. they, they kind of got it everywhere. Like really? spam, spam masubi. I think that's That's called. a Hawaiian thing. Yeah, and also Weird. Filipino. Okay. Filipino, but there's a little bit of crossover in Hawaiian Filipino culture. Mm. Um, Polynesian yeah. vibes. Yeah. 
But go back, go back to the cat food. So you never tried cat food. What? You never open the can and you just think for a moment? Hmm, I mean, I've had a good smell and I've joked about it, but I've never committed to taking a bite. Like, what about when you have a kid? You know, like, I don't know if you're planning to have kids, but you like feed your your baby food. You want to like give it a taste first. Is this safe? Am I going to kill my kid? You got to taste it. I feel like right baby now. food is way less gnarly thing to eat. It's human safe. I saw this post. It was like a random thing on TikTok. It was, you know, those like show that show is called my strange addiction yes it was like a snippet from that and this woman got addicted to eating cat food uh, yeah i remember that have you one. seen that yeah <laughs> yeah i remember she's just eating dry kibble like all day long i don't know if i believe the if that yeah. show is real or not because no. there was another dude who was like drinking gasoline every day yeah you can you'd die and then there was another <laughs> woman i believe who was eating couch cushions okay like she'd take little bits of foam and just be eating her couch all day hmm. My theory, though, is that <laughs> if you're just a random person or actor, I, are you willing to pretend that that's your real life? Yes. You know what I mean? I Why? There's so no, many man. people in America uh, yeah. that, you know. I, I, if you're from a small town, yeah. you're like, yeah, whatever. The, and then it, you're the fucking gasoline drinker. Yeah, but <laughs> it, everybody knows that you're not. And then you say like, oh, you know, I got a fat check. And now they're yeah. rich and they love you. And they want to. Yes, I guess. I it's believe like it. to a girl. What about it? She is known for spitting on penises before <laughs> sucking on them. That's what that means? Oh, my <laughs> God. Yeah, but to us, spit on that thing. Yeah, but, <laughs> but to compare them, she was just some drunk person that, like, a guy shoved a camera in her face. She wasn't, like, at home, like, oh, this is a job I will do today. No, but <laughs> she has made it into her job, basically. Yeah, well, she leveraged it. Yeah. People yeah, do anything. This is for apples fame. and oranges. No, no, no. Do you know that she has a podcast now? Yeah, it's called Talk to Us. Yeah. <laughs> is, it? <laughs> is it really? Yeah. Oh, no. the puns are endless. You guys got to get her on the pod. No. Oh, she's beyond our range. Oh, no, yeah. One day you'll get there. <laughs> yeah. I'd do anything uh, to bone her. Real quick. Uh, do you have any good Jordy Lund stories? Yeah, I have some pretty good ones. That you can tell on the pod. I'm trying to decide if I can tell them on the pod. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, pretty rowdy, dude. But yeah, uh, I mean, Jordy was such a solid dude, man. Oh, for to, sure. I had a chance to to ride and shoot with him once yep. on Bear Mountain on the okay, island. Okay, yeah. He was building a, like a bike park there with the owners, and he built like a road gap and stuff. Yeah. And, filmed it. and he was just so nice the yep. whole time. And uh, mm -hmm. we also did the uh, Nanaimo project with Jordy, right? Cool. He rode mm -hmm. the, uh, we rode, ben, uh, what's that What's that mountain called? Dumont. Sorry. Dumont. Yep. Yeah. Wait, okay. Benson. Mount Benson. Yeah. Benson's the better mountain of the two. It's got the, we it's did the bigger mountain Benson. with the better trails. Okay. You're probably in Dumont. We were on Dumont when um, that like the blue thing. flow trail. Okay. Was built. Yeah. Yeah. I know what it's called. called. And the Simpsons Network and all that. Okay. Am I mixing up two things? The Simpsons yeah. Network is, the, ben Simpsons is Network. the bottom of Benson. Uh, okay. Yeah. The flow trails. You need Dumont. to look at Trail Forks. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, Jordy's solid dude. Like, Such I a mean, good dude. Everybody like talks about how his appearance didn't match his like soft interior, right? He's got like eye tattoos, like yeah. just tatted up on the neck everywhere. He, but he was he was a softy. Yeah, he was such a nice. I mean, my favorite. Like, I love with Jordy. We have a lot of funny stories from partying together and other and road trips together and things like that. But probably my best memories with him were like the last few years he was around because he lived down in Victoria. I lived up in Comox which is like almost three hours apart. And every year for like three years in a row, he managed to surprise me on my birthday. Oh, like he just like rolled up to my house and we're like, we were just something crazy would happen. And like Chelsea definitely helped like coordinate, but it was pretty rad. Like there was one year where like, I wasn't planning on doing any much. It was like pretty low key. And then he just like rolls up with a couple of our homies and like, we end up going to the casino. He puts down $500 right away, loses it all within <laughs> two minutes and then gains it all back plus a dollar within another two minutes. And then we just like, then we go back to my house and, we made like a donut tower and then like, <laughs> I don't know, all this crazy stuff happened in the house. It was pretty funny. And it was always a good time. Like he just like, he brought the energy. He was like the glue to our friend circle. So like when he, when, once he was gone, like people kind of dispersed more and that's been kind of the hardest part of it is trying to get everyone together, doing fun stuff. He was definitely the kind of guy who brought the energy to a room and got things going. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, talk on his like his appearance. Cause yeah. he, he was truly covered in tattoos. Yeah. He loved tattoos. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, it's a pretty tough exterior to be walking around with. Yet, yeah. I mean, would you agree that it didn't really yeah. match his personality? Well, I remember when I lived with him, he, he only had, like, two tattoos at the time. He had, like, the big rhino on the side of his body. And then, like, another tattoo somewhere else that was harder to see. And then, um, then he ended up getting, like, a huge neck tattoo all of a sudden one day out of nowhere. He just got a big tricycle tattooed on his neck. Didn't even tell his girlfriend at the time. <laughs> 
she was like so pissed at him. <laughs> they didn't last very long after that. <laughs> um, yeah, it was pretty funny. And then he just like got really into it and he's, he's like fully committed. Then he got the giant moose on his chest shortly after that and just spread from there. And then his older brother, Craig, is a tattoo artist. And Craig basically used Jordy's body as a canvas to learn how to get better at doing tattoos. So like their whole family is so awesome. Everyone's so supportive of each other and they're really tight knit. That was a big part of it too. He's like, oh yeah, you can tattoo anything you want on me. Wow. Uh, that's pretty neat. Yeah. You got a tattoo. What's yeah, I got a Craig tattoo. Just tat one? These are two Craig tattoos right oh, here. Oh, really? Yeah, his brother did this, and then got a wizard, and then a castle up here, a skull, a skull pit below it. What do they mean to you? I don't know. They're just fun tattoos that, uh, Craig, fair enough. that Craig designed. I was like, oh, that's cool. I want that. I don't oh, know. wow. Yeah. <laughs> we did this one during Rebel Rampage. We were watching Rampage. Well, really? he put this one on me, and it, it took like five hours to get that tattoo done, because we would stop every two seconds to watch someone's run. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. I remember Jordy, he, uh, he, he lived in West Van at one point, I think, didn't he? Is that true? Yeah, I think that's one of the places he was when he was on the shore because he, he moved out of the house the last few months I lived there and he moved to West Van, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yeah, because he was doing a lot of building up on like Cypress area. Yeah, I remember uh, that. I wondered, like, I came across a, a like a, a, a golf course in the forest, basically. Really? Little platforms, like where you would tee off. And there was many of them. And I, I don't think it was Frisbee golf. I think I think it was golf because there was tin cans. So Okay. If, as far as I remember. But I always wondered if he made that thing. But I don't I, know. I would circle around this section of forest and I'd see all the stuff that uh, people told me. I think I did a, a tour. Or Nick Tingring gave me a tour or something. And he was like, oh, okay. yeah, Jordy built that. Jordy built that. And there's some yeah. crazy shit. Did you see the North Shore Mega Ramp? That's what he called it. It's like. Oh, I don't know. This really janky narrow rolling down a. It's not like the tree roll, but it's like it goes down a tree as its base, and then it's into like a really steep, lippy wood takeoff into a big loamy landing. I think I did see yeah. that. I it was in Alchemy One, the first one. Oh that, yeah, that he Cork Seven did, of course. I think I know the yeah. one, and okay. it's near the the Gulf. Yeah, it's like right above British Properties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, and he had that rock star sponsor too, the energy yep. drink sponsor. Sick. He had a lot of great movie segments. He did. Like, there were some really fun ones. Yeah. He was always like a a G in, in these music or in these videos too. And I think wasn't there like one? Didn't he make a video where he like wakes up and he's exercising in the morning? He wakes up and he like does cr or uh, pull ups and then he what does he do? Like yeah, does he eat? I like don't know this you don't remember this one? I, no. I just remember he had. Cra like flats, flats and flats and yeah. flats of rock star. Mm -hmm. Sleeping on like a mattress on the floor. Yeah, this like crazy phase where he got really into like calisthenics, like doing all the nuts moves off the off the bar. He would do crazy shit like that. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Well, any other stories? Any other good stories? <laughs> I'm just milking you with stories. Yeah, it's not yeah. too often that we Where's have we have someone in here that was as close as you were to Jordy. Yeah, I mean I remember when he first built the tree roll for Rough AF3. Oh, that's what I was going to ask because, you. Because, yeah, we had, we had a set of jumps. Well, like the Jarrett Moore and Wink Grant. Remember those guys? They built a yep. set of dirt jumps in Victoria. And Jordy had kind of been kind of cleaning them up like 10 years later, making them really nice again. And about five minutes down the woods from there, there was this giant tree. And I remember coming out of a session at the jumps one day with Jordy. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to ride down that tree. <laughs> He's like talking about building something down it. And we're like, dude, there's no way that's even doable. Cause it's like nearly vertical where the Y was like where his rolling was it. I think it measured like 70 feet from the forest floor to the top. So it's really high. And <laughs> you know, the one we're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the rough yeah. Tree roll. Yeah. So like even in video, it looks so mellow compared to in person. It's like, <sighs> it looks like nothing in video. Like, and it looks gnarly on video. So it's, that's cool. That's still there. Actually the landowners, now, now you can't really access it from the road as easily. You have to, it's a really long hike in, but the landowners have left it there and they know about it. Oh, really? Yeah. So if you were able to talk to like Craig or someone, you could actually get in there and check it out in person. I would love to see yeah. that. Uh, that's like kind of a bucket yeah. list thing. The bottom of it's cut off um, because shortly after he filmed it, there was some random dude hiking up there and hanging out at the top. Oh, and really? He, he just didn't want to be liable for anything that went wrong. So he went back up with the chainsaw, cut the bottom off it so you couldn't ride it anymore. But yeah, it's still there and the rest of it's still there. Darren Bearcloth actually took a bunch of that extra wood from it and he made a mini mock-up of the tree roll at the Jordy Lund Bike Park in Victoria. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can see that there. That's, That's from awesome. the same wood from the actual tree roll. And then there's like a little memorial for him that some guys made. I'm not sure who made it, but there's a little memorial at the actual tree roll there. 
I mean, that's got to be cool. one of the craziest things done in mountain biking ever. I think so. Yeah, I would agree with that. Like from being at Rampage in person and seeing everything and seeing that, it's just like the risk factor involved and the technicality is crazy. I, I mean, like when we show people in our circles who don't mountain bike that clip, you get a reaction from it. And yeah. that's when you know, like, oh, even though, yeah. you know, the GoPro effector, it doesn't really do justice, the video, people still have the reaction. We actually played that clip in a kids react video. Oh, did you? Yeah, we yeah. had kids in here and we showed them clips. Yeah. And that one i think that was the biggest reaction yeah every mm -hmm. time one yeah of the kid one of the kids uh oliver he was like that's so scary and he covered his eyes he was too scared to watch <laughs> scary. it mm -hmm. yeah it really startled him yeah they're all watching it going like don't do it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i mean he was definitely a big inspiration for me to get more creative with trail building so i'd always kind of built my own dirt jumps to have something to ride yeah and to film and then just seeing what he was doing like even just living with him in Vancouver, he was still doing stuff like that. He just wasn't documenting it properly. Mm. So I'd say for like the last like 10 years or more, he's definitely had a huge inspiration on me on the way I make trails. What about uh, just your riding, pushing your riding, like the tricks and maneuvers you're doing? Cause yeah, definitely an inspiration there as well. Yeah, for sure. Was he one of the first to do the 720 or the 360? What I don't know what it really a was three called. Flip? Three, yeah, flip? three flip or a yeah. cork seven. I think he was the first guy on a mountain bike to land that. Yeah, I remember that yeah. was pretty exciting yeah. when he was pulling that off. Man, he crashed yeah. hundreds of times. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Tough dude. <sighs> Should we play a game? Please. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, we have another game for you. It's called This or That. Are you familiar? Sounds complicated. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's pretty technical. Okay. Super technical. Uh, oh, wow, basically, nice we have a list of things, either this or that. I'm gonna ask you. Okay. And you gotta reply which one. Um yeah, you ready? Let's go. Okay. Uh, it's been a while. There we go. Number one, sunrise or sunset? Ooh, sunrise. Left hand or right hand? Left hand. Step down or step up? Step down. Goat style or jump ship? Ooh, <laughs> jump ship. <laughs> <laughs> step brothers or Napoleon Dynamite? Step brothers. Dry trails or wet trails? Wet trails. Bad brakes or bad suspension? Uh, both of those things are terrible. Yes. Bad suspension. Good choice. You need to be able to stop. Yeah, well, one's going to kill you. Yeah. Pee a marble or poop a baseball? Oh, man. <laughs> poop a baseball. Nice. Photo shoot or video shoot? Video shoot. Ooh. Nanaimo bars? Or Nanaimo bars. What? <laughs> Nanaimo bars. Wait, wait, wait. What's the difference? They're spelt different. Aren't they? Oh, no. It's no, the no, same. No, no. It's, it's the same thing. thing. What? We just love Nanaimo it's bars here? This. No, no, no. Think about <laughs> it. No, no. Think about no. it. Oh, wait. Nanaimo bars like the treat or Nanaimo bars like a pub? Yep. Yeah, there you go. Oh, Nanaimo bars the treat. <laughs> Good choice. <Yes. laughs> Mark Wahlberg or Mark Ruffalo? Mark Wahlberg. Coffee or kombucha? Um, kombucha. Urban DH race or whip off? Whip off. Not 200 million views though. Yeah. No, what? it's more fun though. <laughs> <laughs> Sharknado or Orca Cane? Sharknado. What's Orca Cane? Orca Cane? Orca Hurricane. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Orca Hurricane. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's still Wait. early. I got, I got where where all these. <laughs> They're R more rare. Riding in the desert or riding in the forest? Forest. Cable cam or FPV? Anderson Cabrera's. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, man. Oh, he wants to say cable cam. You can tell. I, I do want to say cable cam just because I've had the most experience with that. Take that, Anderson. Yeah. Go back to where you came from. <laughs> <laughs> Bentonville. Bentonville. <laughs> uh, whip or table? Table. And finally, and most importantly, dick sized nipples. Or most nip important. <laughs> or nipple sized dick. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> what? I was, uh, I was too busy laughing then. Dick sized nipples or nipple yeah. sized dick? Dick sized nipples. Oh my god, Dave. Does anybody say nipple sized dick? Uh, females and okay. female adjacent. No, no, a few guys <laughs> have said it. Oh, really? Yeah, and they're just not thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Thanks. Well done, Mr. Yeah. Marky, Mark, Math, the Shark, Sharknado. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, 
Uh, yeah, what's next? You guys gonna go fly some FPVs? No? Yeah, we're gonna you go see more, find some fun stuff to fly, and yeah. Hopefully, it didn't chew up all your time. No, it's all good. We Hopefully, there's some out. sick fog out there. Hopefully, it's a little cloudy this morning. Yeah. Well, thanks for stopping by, guys, and uh, mm-hmm. safe travels on your flight home, Anderson. Make sure you uh, don't bring that can to the airport. They don't want to see that. Make sure you chug it. <laughs> yeah, before chug you. it right before your flight. Yeah, right at the <laughs> security. Yeah. They love when you do that. And some brownies, maybe, if you have. So. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for listening. If you made it this far, give us a like. Give us a sub. And uh, give us some love. We love you. Thank you out there in Chother Town, Chother Nation, Chother Village, Chother Global. Chother, Chother Country. Other, other country. <laughs> and <laughs> also leave us a voicemail at speakpipe.com slash feeding off each other. Mark, you want to leave us a voicemail? I might. Uh, ask I us, might. ask I might. us a question. Yeah. Never will, man. Yeah. No, I no one ever does. You better wrap it up. No one ever does. No, <laughs> I mean, not the guests. Not okay. the guests. Okay. Gully did. Gully did. Oh, Gully is a stand-up friend, okay? He, mm-hmm. he really pulled through. He's a man of his word. You okay. know? I don't know if you are. I'm not, it's, oh. I won't hold it against you or anything. <laughs> if you know, I have well, any fine. questions or something to say, I might, might drop in there. We'll see. Yeah. And if you're so inclined, visit mahalomydude.com where we have a ton of merch and stickers and other exciting things you can use code feeding for 10 percent off your order that's uh mahalomydude.com and mark what do you want to promote your rove website at all yeah if you're interested in bike tours check out rove.ca we'll have a lot more stuff showing up soon and if you're a tour operator and you want a really nice platform to share your experiences with feel free to check us out because we'll be promoting everyone for free who puts new trips up on there and yeah check out my social media as well is that At Marky R- Math on Instagram and everywhere? R O V E. R O V E. Dot C A. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. And if you're a cat fan out there, yeah. Cat named Fig. Check out a cat named Fig. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. And, and as, as always. No, 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 no,